90. The 90th division of the Psalms. I'm going to read a, a statement here in the Bible. And then I'm going to bring you the message um, that I feel like the Lord's laid on my heart. Psalm 90 and verse 12. Psalm 90 verse 12. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Teach us to number our days. I want to preach this morning on the subject, how to live in 2018. In, what, 12 hours and 20 minutes or so, we will be 2018. We are standing on a threshold, like going through a door. We are in the open door. We're treading on a borderline that we've never trod before. Another year is opening and another year is gone. We've passed the darkness of the night and in the early dawn. We've left the fields behind us over which we've scattered seed and we've passed to the future that none of us can read. Then hasten to fresh labor to thresh and reap and sow and bid the new year welcome and let the old year go. If I were to have just a few minutes of advice, encouragement to you to begin 2018, this would be it. Number one, I'd like to encourage you to do what we've been talking about this morning. Read your Bible. Get in the book. Read your Bible. Now, I've heard people criticize us and others. I've, I've heard people criticize us saying, oh, I don't believe in that, reading five chapters a day, ten chapters a day. I believe you just let the Lord lead you and, and you get in there and boy, it gets real like that and everything. Now, that, that sounds all good and spiritual and people who talk like that love to think I'm a spiritual giant and the Lord leads me to deeper truths and I find things in the Bible. Those people have to make their self ready. That, that sounds good, but you're leaving out something. You're leaving out the fact that you have very rebellious flesh and your flesh don't always want to get up and read the Bible. It don't. Mine don't. Yours don't. Nobody's don't. And so that's why we commit ourselves. Now, sometimes I do. I've been in 2 Thessalonians this week, and I've seen different things and more light in 2 Thessalonians than I've ever seen in my life. I believe in reading it like that. I believe in reading it spiritually, let it speak to you. But you don't always feel like that, do you? You don't always think, oh, I'm so, I'm so led by the Spirit. I'm going to get in there and find deep truth in the Word of God. That's why you make yourself read the Word of God every day. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God shall man live. Every word of God. We believe we have God's word. I believe that we have God's word preserved in English the way he intended us to have it. I don't believe there's a mistake in this book. I heard somebody laughing at us for believing that the other day. They said them poor people preach the 1611 Bible. They don't even have the 1611 Bible. And they think they're so smart when they say stuff like that. And they talk about it being revised in 1769. They don't even know what they're talking about. Uh, the, 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 the changes in spelling of the words in 1769 is not and was not a revision was not a revision. And the King James Bible is just not one in a long list of revisions. No, 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 no. There's way more to this than that. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the book that God has used more than any other book in the entire world. Man said, well, how, uh, how do you know which one's right? I'll tell you one way you'll know, the infallible law of the Lord Jesus Christ. By their fruit, you shall know them. Look at the fruit this book has produced. No other book on the planet, including the original manuscripts in Hebrew and Greek, brought forth the fruit that this book has produced. Ignore it at your own peril, friend. Ignore it uh, to your own uh, destruction if you keep going that way. We need to get in the book. Now the Bible said, till I come, he told Timothy, give attendance to reading. 
Isaiah 34, 16, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read and read and read. It's a book worth all other books. John Locke said that true, it's truth without any mixture of error. Your Bible laying in your lap this morning has 1,189 chapters. It has 31,175 inspired verses, 810,699 words, and 3,566,480 letters. At 10 chapters a day, you can read the entire Bible through three times this year. Now, that would be about as many, much time as you spend eating, eating. Most people in here spend one hour a day eating, feeding your flesh. The kids at camp spend about three and a half hours a day eating. They eat every 45 minutes. And sometimes, uh, I've, I've been in the steakhouse before and timed myself. And we go and you get all you can eat. And I sit there and I, I ate for 45 minutes. I mean just one bite right after another. I don't sit and talk when I mean I just cram in one bite right after another. I've had people say, Brother Danny, how, how, you're so little, how can, how can you eat so much? I go a long time before I eat again. That's the secret. And uh, uh, you can eat anything you want to if you go long enough before you eat again. And I'll maybe mention more about that in a minute. That's a good uh, New Year's resolution, I reckon. Uh, but anyway, uh, the, that's the Bible. Uh, that's the Bible. Five in the Old Testament, five in the New Testament. You can go through the Old Testament twice and the New Testament four times. You can read five chapters a day like I do, three in the Old, two in the New, and go through the whole Old Testament once and the New Testament three times this year. You can read your Bible. Read your Bible. This book, brother, will stand when the world's on fire. Do you know that science false science, and the Bible are at complete odds. Again, you know, if a scientist, he believes in evolution and he teaches uh, that we come up from a meme and everything, man, the very first verse of that first five words of that book, first four words of that book and five, first sentence says, in the beginning God created. Oh my God, that's enough to start a war with right there. First statement, I mean, we ain't even got good and started yet, and it says, in the beginning God created. So the Bible takes for granted there's a God and the Bible says he created everything. Did you know Jesus Christ was a creationist? He said, uh, from the beginning of the creation of God, God made them male and female. There's not a scientist in the world who's atheist and believes in evolution believe that the male principle and the female principle were here all, all at the same time. They believe everything evolved. They believe everything involved uh, from uh, uh, inanimate objects and then finally back to nothing if you believe there's no God. If you believe there's no God, you believe that everything come from nothing all by itself. One guy, they talk, I heard a preacher talking about this, one guy that some scientists believe that everything in the universe came from a single little speck of dirt smaller than a pinhead. That's what they teach. It exploded. That was a big bang, brother. If everything can come out of a speck of dirt. And they said, uh, who knows? We might be an experiment of somebody on another planet and created all this. And anything but God, anything but believe there's a God. You know what one scientist said? He said, I know there's a lot of problems with evolution. I know there's problems. We've never seen one change from one kind to another. Uh, uh, there's animals adapt. That's not evolution. Adapt into your environment's not evolution. Grow, people, things grow, trees grow. That's not evolution. Uh, real, uh, the, the, the bedrock teaching of evolution believes that one kind changed into another kind. And there is no. I'm not talking about the other five definitions of it that are easy. But ladies and gentlemen, we believe in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And with all the scientific discoveries and all the knowledge of man, there has still never been a better explanation for us being here than in the beginning God. In the beginning God. You got a better explanation? I'd sure like to hear it. Now, uh, they say, well, it, it come from there. There's, only, there's really only four explanations of the world being here and the universe. Number one, 
it came out of nothing by itself. Number two, it came out of nothing with a help from a creator. Number three, it always has been here. Ain't now have no beginning. Or number four, it ain't even here. You just think it is. That's very popular among the hippies back in the 60s. When they started smoking pot and, and stuff, and they said, man, that's not even reality, man. That's not even reality. Well, uh, about the time you get cancer, you'll realize it's reality. By the time you get hit by a car, you'll realize reality. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here. And it's not always been here. There's only one scientific explanation for the earth being here, and that's in the beginning, God. You need to take a new look at this book this year. Make up your mind. I'll probably start tonight at 12 o'clock. Uh, they're having watch night services everywhere and everything, Lord willing. I will probably start tonight at 12. I don't usually do that on a regular day, uh, but I'm going to hit, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. Here I go again, Lord. Show me stuff I've never seen before. Work in my heart. Make me strong. Help me to be a better man. I'll start out the beginning of the New Testament of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 1. We need in the new year, get in the book. Number two. Number two. You know what we need in 2018? We need to stay with what's right. Stay with what's right, people. Stay with what's right. Don't get off course. Don't let the devil in the world push you off the highway. Get in the Word of God in the middle of the road and stay right. I can't tell you. I can't tell you the stories of people that I know that used to sit in church just like you are this morning and messed around a little bit messed around a little bit more and got off track and got off track and today they don't even go to church. I don't make up my mind this morning by the grace of God in 2018 to stay in the right road. Just every time, every time it's possible, keep in church, keep the same, keep the same convictions, keep the same beliefs, right still right, wrong still wrong. It don't matter what the world says. I, don't, I know the world has put its approval on, on living together with not being married and, and getting drunk and, and being homosexual and everything. I'm surprised this year they didn't make a new movie called Homo Alone or something. I, I really, Daddy Kissing Santa Claus. I mean, it's coming, brother. It's co I'm, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, I, I've never seen the world in the mess it's in. Have you ever seen so much corruption in our government, in politics? It's seen, who, when somebody told me the other day, they said, Brother Danny, who do you even trust anymore? I said, the Lord. That's who you can trust. You, you can't trust you. You can't even trust yourself. But thanks be to God, you can trust Him. You can trust Him. I like that song. They say, I can trust Jesus. I I can trust Jesus. The world may be going the 90 miles an hour the wrong way, but thank God I can trust Jesus this morning. Amen. Amen. Get your heart right. Get your heart right. Stay with the stuff. Stay with what's right, and God will bless you for it. Stay, stay in your giving. Keep giving. Don't, this ain't no time. Listen, you say, well, Brother Danny, the economy's bad and money's tight. I just can't. Keep, I, don't, I gotta protect. I tell you what you better do. You better realize where it all come from and you better remember who gave you what you've got. Every dime you've ever made, God gave it to you. I don't know, right just there a minute ago, I put my tithes and offering in that offering plate that goes in. It's pictured by the Old Testament storehouse. It's endorsed by the Lord Jesus Christ. I know it's not a, Christ, a, a Pauline epistle command for Christians. I understand that. It ain't stupid. You know what they did in the, Old, in the New Testament? If you want to get that dispensational about it. They gave it all in the book of Acts. So you better not preach too hard against tithing or you're a hypocrite. I'm glad, thank God, this morning I can put my offering in that offering plate. I can give. I can do right. I can serve God in 2018. Amen. Hope you'll do it. Hope you'll do it. My daughter is sitting right over there this morning. Not the oldest one. And not the one with the new baby. She was little. She was sitting on the counter in the kitchen. I'd set her there for something like that. When I didn't want to run off of them, I'd set them on the counter. They couldn't get down. And I had 30 
Five dollars, I think. A $20 bill, $10 bill, and a five dollar bill laying there. We was getting ready to go somewhere or something. I thought she was awful quiet, and I come back in there, and she took that money and was just tearing it up like that. I'm like, ah! What are you doing? You know what I done? I done what you try to do when it happens. Get you some tape. I messed with that stuff, trying to tape it back together. I, you can't hardly spend it if it's tore up too bad. Or you get, the, you know, half of, this half's a 10, that half's a 20. Or something, and, and you, you get all messed up. I said, you know what? You say, I said, honey, that's money. Now, her husband said she still goes through it like that. Uh, but, but you know what? Uh, to a, to a one-year-old, money don't mean nothing. They don't care about money. They don't care about money. And you know what? You know what? When you're really, really, really right with God, money's not the top of your list. Is it really? Listen, if money's the best thing you can find in this world, you're, you're missing it by a country mile. Nothing wrong with money. You ought to make, the more you get, I mean, it can, money can buy you stuff. Can't buy you happiness. Can't buy you health. It buys stuff, and ain't nothing wrong with that. If you got it, hallelujah. But I tell you what you better do. You better give God what's His. In 2018, by His grace, I want to give Him even more than I have before. I tell you something else. We ought to make things right with each. You ever, you ever had anybody, don't raise your hand, you ever had anybody owe you money, and they told you they'd pay you, and every time you see them, you think, well, well, and, and they just don't mention it. I was in church. People get mad at each other over that. I got, heard a guy say one time, this dentist, he was real faithful to church. Man made good money, you know, and everything. And, and he, he quit coming to church. And the pastor called him. He wouldn't answer the phone. Called him. He wouldn't answer the phone. And finally went over to visit him. He said, brother, he said, you, you come to church real good there. For a while, he said, why in the world, what made you quit? And he said, I'd just rather not talk about it, Pastor. He said, come on, brother, there's got to be a reason. You quit church. Why? He said, I really, I just don't want to talk about it. He said, brother, I mean, there's got to be a reason. What is it? He said, all right, I'll tell you. I just got sick and tired of hearing people sing hymns through teeth that they won't pay for. <laughs> I, said, I said, ain't that right? Listen, brother, we ought to pay up our, de our debts. Amen? If you owe somebody some money, man up. And say, look, here's five dollars. I ain't trying to cheat you. I'll pay you the last dime by the grace of God. Amen. That's how to start out the new year. I don't want to go around feeling guilty over something. I don't want to go around feeling like, uh oh, uh oh, I'm going to get caught. I, I, the, the look out. You don't want to get nervous every time a phone rings. You don't want to live like that. Man up, face it, get it over with. Put it behind. If you've acted like an idiot and blew your testimony, go back to that person and apologize to them at work and say, look, I'm a Christian. I acted wrong the other day and I'm sorry. You'll do more for the cause of Jesus Christ by acting right like that than you, you'd ever dream. Ladies and gentlemen, we ought to start out 2018 with the right spirit. Amen. I have people every year say, Brother Danny, preach on marriage. I have people say, Brother Danny, please preach on raising children. I have brother, people say, Brother Danny, preach on prophecy. Brother Danny, preach on... Uh, and I, I think, listen, I'm doing the best I can to give us what we need. Lord, it's hard to feed this many people. Some have been saved 25 years. Some have been saved 25 days. Some know a lot about the Bible. Some know nothing. And I trust God when I get up here to take the meal that I'm serving and feed everybody in here. And he's able to do that. He's able to do that. Then you want to do this. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. Don't give up praying. Don't give up praying. Keep on praying. You say, preacher, I've got somebody in my family and they're crazy. And I've prayed for them for 10, 15, 20 years and nothing ever changed. Don't you give up praying. I've got people in my family that's crazy. I've got people in my family that just, I mean, you think, could not, they ain't no hope for them. I have an uncle up north. Last one of my daddy's brothers. I talked to him the other day. I call him every Christmas. I call him Christmas Day. My Uncle Tom, he's the last, I, I think, I got one sister. Uh, 
My Uncle Tom was a lot like my daddy. He was, that's crazy. I'm telling these people crazy. I, uh, the, the crazy streak in me, no doubt. I come, thank God for mom. Uh, 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 but you know, my, my Uncle Tom, he's, he rode a horse in a bar. Said he always wanted to do that. I mean, really, up there in that little old town of Kermit, there was a bar, it was 11 bars, and the whole town ain't long as near the highway out yonder. The whole town. And he rides a horse in a bar, takes out, orders him a drink, and turns around and rides out. And that was the talk of the town. Man rode a horse in a bar. Somebody asked, they said, Tom, I said, what the, I, I said, uh, I said, how'd it go? He said, well, it went pretty good until somebody put a nickel in the jukebox and the horse started dancing. But that part ain't true. That's just some junk they talk. Uh, but I'm telling you, this, this morning, I, I talked to him the other day, and, he, and he's 83 now. He's 83. My daddy would have been 87 if he was still alive. And I said, Tom, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. As far as I know, Uncle Tom never even made a profession. As far as I know, I hope so. I can't just go crazy this year and not even live right and not even serve God and let my family die without God. Let's pray for our family. Everybody in here has got a cousin, an uncle, a daddy, a mother. Y'all, y'all, don't quit praying. Don't quit praying. Keep the main thing. The last thing I'm saying is keep the main thing the main thing. Keep the main thing. Don't be distracted. Some of you young people don't realize this, but the world ain't got nothing new. They just repackage it. Same old hairstyles, same old uh, the colognes. It's just a remixture of all the old colognes. Uh, the new dress styles, same as the old dress styles. It just makes a circle. And some of you kids think, wow, have you seen the newest? Have you seen the newest? It's the same old stuff. Same old stuff. It ain't got what you... I heard about a man. I'm going to tell you this, and I'm through. There was a man who God used to start a great camp meeting in this country. One of the most famous camp meetings in America. He made the motion that that church start that camp meeting. A deacon in a church. Serve God, live right, and little by little by little, he got out of church. And that man saved as me and you got out and started getting wild and getting drunk on the weekends, lost everything he had spiritually, family and everything. And they said that man, they found him one morning in a trailer where somebody took a thirty-eight pistol and put five bullets in that man's body at a young age. But you know what the scary thing was? You know what God did? He took that man out early. A Christian can shorten their life by rebellious, wicked living. God took that man out early. And you know what happened? They said he'd get drunk and go up and down in front of the church and raise his fist and cuss God and say, You didn't call me. I don't believe in you. Lord. And then the next minute he'd be down on the floor crying saying, Oh, God, forgive me. Oh, God, forgive me. He was a man tormented. There's no man tormented in the world worse than a really saved man that sins got a hold in and a grip. Lord, that'll drive you to suicide, people. It'll drive you to, don't let, if you're really, really, really saved, you got so much of God you can't enjoy the world. You got so much of the world you can't enjoy God. And you, get, you can get miserable like that. Life's too short to live like that. Life's too short. Right, get to, this morning, this morning, get rid of your dirty movies. Get rid of your dirty music. Get rid of all. Get, you say, well, Brother Danny, we're all saved by grace. I ain't talking about being saved. I'm talking about living right in 2018. The grace of God teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. Live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. I left out a bunch. I'm through this morning. I'm going to start out by God's grace, 2018, nailing down what I know is right and just keep right straight on going. The same, I believe the same thing, preach the same thing that I did 40 years ago. You don't have to change what is right. Oh, you're just stubborn, hard-headed and all that. Uh-uh, uh-uh. I've done tested it out, y'all. I've done, done the research. I done my homework. 
what me and you got this morning is the right way. It's the right way. Not because we got it. It always has been. Stay with it. Let's stand by our head for prayer. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Nobody's talking. Nobody's moving. This is the last Sunday of this year. Piano's playing softly. God's speaking to your heart as a young person, as a teenager, as a mom or a dad. Why don't you get out of your seat? Make way. She's going to have a real short invitation. No singing. She's playing softly. Come on, let's get down on our knees. Let's start out this new year right. Say, I don't need, I don't need no help, preacher. You know, pride goes before destruction. Holy Spirit before fall. I need it. I need all I can get. I need every Sunday night. I need every Wednesday night. I need prayer meetings in between. I need the youth rally coming up in April. I need it. Lord, have mercy, I need it. Lord, have mercy, I need it. Oh, God, we need it. Somebody else, husbands, wives, get down on your knees right here. Say, all right, Lord. I done tried it my way and I made a mess. I tried it your way this time. You let God speak to your heart. You let God speak to your heart. Father, I pray right now in the name of the Lord Jesus, the name above every name, Lord, that you bless every single person here on this altar. I thank you for them. I thank you for your mercy and grace. We pray that you bless every person here. God, I thank you for the bus kids this morning back yonder. Pray you bless them. I pray, dear God, in Jesus' name, Holy Ghost, touch every heart, move on every life, Lord God, as we enter into this new year, if it's, if it's your will for us to stay here, hear God move in our hearts tonight. And help us to live for you this year in 2018. Now, thank you for what you have done what you're going to do. We'll give you the glory for it all. In Jesus' name, amen.